Well, good evening. Welcome along to Super League Raw Weekly. Oh, it's great to have your company. Something's going wrong with Reggie tonight. He's having big problems getting in. We don't know what's going on. Uh, so apologies for that. Hopefully he'll join us at some point. He has got the right link. Something's just not playing ball. Here's end. Uh, I'm just uh, making sure it's 60 boot. Yes, it is. So he has got the right link. Greg, if you're watching, you've been sent the link on your messages. Press the button, sir. Follow the instructions. Steph, good evening to you. How are you, sir? Good evening. I think there's something been wrong with Reggie for a while. So, well, there's something wrong with his connection, whatever that may be. Uh, but anyway, like I say, we're going to have to get on with it. Um, he has got the right link. I've just tried it. So, there you go. Uh, welcome to Super League Raw Weekly, the number one online magazine show. There's no question about that whatsoever. Everybody's in the comments. There they are. They're all saying hello. Uh, fantastic stuff. Tina Holt, that'd be Sam Holt. Of course, Ryan Birch is with us as always. Outstanding. If you want to, if we've got a few Facebook users. You need to go onto the main Super League Raw page if you want us to know your name uh, so that we know who we are speaking to. Absolutely outstanding. The first thing we want you to do this evening is this. Like it right now. Press the like button. Then press your share button. Get your family and friends involved. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to YouTube. If you've not been on YouTube yet, go on after the show and subscribe. And, of course, get your comments going throughout the evening. We will be giving you your usual shout-outs. Outstanding stuff indeed. Right, let's get into it. Of course, we've just had the quarterfinals. This was them. Uh, brilliant performances in this lot. Uh, the Robins, 26-14 winners over the Lee Leopards. The Dragons going down 34-6 to the Huddersfield Giants. Brilliant performance that for the Cowbell Army. The Tigers, well, we'll talk about them tonight, I'm sure, but 60 points to six. The World Club champions really putting them in a the box there. And then, of course, the Saints-Warrington game, 31 points to eight. Simply sensational, the Warrington Wolves in that one. Uh, the confirmed locations, of course, for the semi-finals, they have come out. Uh, bit of a surprise, Doncaster will be hosting Wigan against Hull KR. Uh, that's an interesting one, Steph. Yeah, I think they've they've hosted one before. Haven't they? Didn't they host Leeds and Saints one year? I think they did. I think they did. Was it OKR? What it was somewhat. So I remember there being a quarterfinal, sorry, a semi final there before. It's a really good stadium, Doncaster. I've been quite a few times in in our championship days. Um, it's um, it's a bit like the, the the sports village, but with the corners filled in. Um, it's it's a really tidy stadium. Yeah, and I think you know. <laughs> I'm trying. We don't do negativity. We're going over to Doncaster. We know there's a big rugby league community over that side of, of Yorkshire. We know that. Uh, however, how many of the locals will be actually going to that is questionable. Good for Doncaster in terms of a payday. About four, four and a half thousand difference between Doncaster and Headingley. I think they could have filled Headingley, these two clubs. And I think it's a lot easier for Wigan to get to than Doncaster will be. Yeah. Uh, but that said, those type of stadiums, um, those type of stadiums really hold the atmosphere well, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it would have been nice to have it at Headingley. Um, I, I love Headingley. I think it's one of the best stadiums out there. But um, I'm, I'm all right with Doncaster. I know that they, there's a few people there who say you don't know what you're talking about, but it is a good stadium. Um, uh, and... It would be, be interesting. I think the RFL want a full stadium. I think they want it to look really, really good on TV, and that stadium will look really good on TV. Full. Yeah, I mean, uh, Don Baker is the person in the chat. I mean, hello, Don. Good evening to you. Always nice to have your company. Uh, why put two Wigan games on two different days in two different stadiums? It's a good point. It is a valid point. I've got no issue with that. It is a tough drive, that one, uh, for for them. By all accounts, Headingley is hosting the cricket, so he's not available. Don Kirkby there coming into the chat. Fantastic, Don. Good knowledge. Loving a bit bit of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully, like I say, Doncaster will get a full a full stadium. It will be a great atmosphere. As for Warrington, of course, Huddersfield, that goes to the totally wicked stadium. So let's hope the pitch is in good order uh, for that one. We get some dry tracks by the time we get around to that. It will be fantastic. Right, let's have a little chat uh, about the big the big one, really. Warrington against St. Helens. Um, brilliant game. You know, we, we spoke at length on the Final Whistle podcast uh, with regards to this. And I am talking to the minority now of St. Helens supporters, and I know that. So, you know, you St. Helens supporters who have gone on there and given Warrington credit and all of that, we're not talking to you. We're talking to the rest. Um, there's some really shocking uh, behaviour that's gone on uh, off the back of this. I'm going to share a few with you. These are taken directly from the Facebook feed of St. Helens. OK, Mark Atherton, 
I've not seen him on Super League Raw. Harpax is terrible. Lomax is past it. I mean, you, you, you couldn't make this up. Lomax is past it. Dodd's never been good enough. Something needs to change. I mean, first things first, Lomax past it. Holy <laughs> use, Tef. Yeah, I think Lomax is in his prime. Um, you know, he's still got plenty of seasons left in him yet, I think, Johnny. And he's a fit lad as well. Um, it's, I think you're always going to get these kind of reactions from a club like St. Helens because they're used to winning things. Um, and um, the, the, some, some of their fans expect them to win every single game and everything, which is, you know, not realistic. Um, and sometimes you have just got to hold your hand up and say on the day you were beaten by the better side. Absolutely, 100%. And, and don't get me wrong, there's quite a few St. Helens fans who, who said exactly that. No yeah. complaints, got beat by a better side. Not, not, a, not a problem at all. There's another guy called uh, Graham Davies. Uh, look at the lacklustre demeanour. That's how the team played today. We have no attack and now our defence is slipping as well. This is a team that in seven rounds of Super League has conceded eight points a game. There is not a defensive problem here. It's just one of those days. It's one of those days where the opposition have turned up and have done a, a put a performance on simple as that, you know, when yeah. it happens to the best of them. I hope and proved wrong, but we will win nothing under this coach, was what Graham Davies said. Grant Tomo, whoever that was, Wellens, he's not up to it. Come on, aim and do the necessary thing and get rid. Uh, we are playing as bad as when Cunningham was here. Here it comes again. Uh, please don't mention the Wigan game because that was played on emotion. No, we will, we will mention the Wigan game. You know, mm -hmm. you come up against the world club champions and you beat them. You know, that was a couple of rounds ago. We have short memories. I, I also saw in quite a, quite a few of the chats, well, uh, Wormsley's not worth a two-year contract, that that was an irresponsible <laughs> decision. Again, you couldn't make it up. So for those people who wrote that nonsense, and again, I'm not talking to, you know, bona fide St. Helens fans who, you know, are rugby league people. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the minority. And don't you know, every club's got these people. Steph knows that at Lee this year. You know, every club's got them. But this is a man who didn't deserve a two-year contract. He's played all seven Super League games. Yes, he's got another hamstring injury. That's the one concern for Alex Wormsley. The last three seasons, he has missed parts of the season. He does seem to have a, some sort of hamstring issue that keeps haunting him. But let's judge him on the games he's played. Seven games played, a try, two line breaks, 35 tackle busts. That eclipses most prop forwards. I mean, you know, we, we, we wax lyrical about Paul Vaughan. Paul Vaughan's got nowhere near 35 tackle busts. Nowhere near it. Yeah. Um, 113 tackles in D, which for which is which is good. Um, you know, happy days. And then the meet is 800, second only to Paul Vaughan as a prop forward. And and the reason the reason I'm doing this is look, we keep saying St. Helens on the field of play, champion club, champion club. Sort yourselves out off it, please. I mean, Wellens out, um, Wormsley doesn't deserve his contract, Dodge shouldn't play again. Blake, whoever signed Blake, should be sacked. Um, Tommy Magidson's legs have gone. Um, irresponsible Wormsley. What was the other one? Oh, yeah. Um, Kristen Wolf won the World Club Challenge, not Paul Wellens, because uh, obviously he was in the box. So that's being thrown at Paul <laughs> Wellens as well. Uh, you're just like, come on. I mean, you don't have a divine right to win a trophy, a knockout trophy. Saying it's going to be there, thereabouts at the end of the year. Simple as that. I just, I just find it bizarre, mate. Absolutely yeah. bizarre. It, it, it is bizarre, and I think it, it's the nature of sport. And like I say, every every club has got that in them, you know. Um, all you'd say to them is, you know, you could be all FC, you could be Castleford at this moment in time. Look at what you've got. You've got world class players. Yeah, you, you are going to be there or thereabouts competing for the grand final this year, regardless of what you think now. Yes, uh, and, and the difference is the reason why you will be is because most uh, Super League clubs haven't got the squad that you've got. And that's when, when the injuries happen and stuff like that, Saints will continue to win. Whereas clubs like myself, like Lee, yeah. we don't because we haven't got that squad, squad depth and quality that the Saints have. So be grateful for what you've got. And the majority of Saints fans do realise that. Yeah, but what I really find distasteful about this, this is a four-time champion team. This is a team that won the World Club Challenge two years ago. And quite frankly, if my team had achieved that in the last five years, I'll tell you what, I would be more than happy for any player that was in the twilight of their career to be winding down and I'd support them and clap them off a the field and the rest of it, mate. Oh, absolutely. You know, you've got to give respect to those those players. And it is, I mean, if, if you know, fans from other clubs are calling you out for what you're saying about your own players, then there's something wrong, isn't there? So, um, well, so maybe, maybe it, 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 all, all will be well when they put 50 past Hull next week. Well, he will. And and like you say, we mentioned this, to, I think, Greg Roach on the on the Final Whistle podcast. Go and listen to it if you've not. 
I think Alex Wormsley, you know, if he wants to sign a two-year contract at Huddersfield or Hull KR, or like, I think he could probably go anywhere other than Wigan, probably, maybe, maybe Warrington, because of con and that's only because of cap space. Couldn't afford him Warrington, it's got too much cap uh, spent. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Wormsley, for me, still got two years in them legs. Absolutely. We'd have him at uh, Lee, no problem. I'm sure you would have. You'd go and drive yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> go, and drive yourself. go and pick him up. Absolutely. We won't go too much into this today, but of course, these are the semi-finals. Robins Warriors, Giants against the Wolves. We will be discussing that in length in a couple of weeks' time. And don't forget, the week before the semi-final, we will be doing the draw. I remember yet at Super League Raw, two tickets to the Challenge Cup final will be won randomly the week before the semi-finals. Two people will be going to Wembley, courtesy of Super League Raw. To become a member, to learn more about our packages, go over to our Patreon website. You want to be a part of of that but yeah we'll talk about those in full but first and foremost let's just do it really quickly robins warriors can the robins do it again against the warriors in the semi-final um the, of course they can yeah um i, I think they'll take um, a, a huge crowd there and um obviously um they, they did it last season to get into the final as well um you know with that fantastic golden point uh drop goal um it's going to be an amazing game and i think probably two of the the, the best sides in Super League at the moment. So um, I think it's going to be a cracking semi-final. Craig Rigby's missed Tuesday night specials. Go on, gents. Good to have you back, Craig, <laughs> mate. Good to have you back. I think you'll be making an appearance on the Final Whistle podcast soon. Last week, we had a question thrown out in the chat. Don't be shy. If you've got a question for me and Steph, and hopefully Greg, when he finally gets his technology sorted out, then by all means, bang it in the chat. We'll answer any questions that you've got uh for us a bit later on right okay so we will come back to the challenge cup a little bit uh, later well in a couple of weeks time when we've got uh when we're, when we're a week out from the challenge cup we've got to go there we've got to go there we've got to go to the the wonder that is Hull FC. We, we've just got to do it i mean you know you Hull FC fans stick around um you probably again nothing that you don't already know probably uh but yeah we're gonna have to go there we're gonna have to go there so obviously it all started with the departure of this man tony smith um and as you can see there in the in what we're saying tony smith saying he wanted to finish the project that's pretty much what he had to say if you missed his outgoing interview uh very disappointed not to see it through now here's a question that i've got steph that's all well and good um but did he know that richie myler at that point of doing the statement was on the horizon because I'll be honest with you now, one of his former players who quite frankly has not got the experience or the pedigree of Tony Smith. Do you think Tony Smith would have been happy with uh, Richie Marlowe as his director of rugby or, or actually has he got more humility than that? Would he have been okay with it? What's what's your thoughts? Outside uh, yeah, I, 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 I once have thought he would have been happy about it. Uh, no. Only because of Myler's lack of experience. Obviously, all he's ever done is been in a playing role. Um, I don't think he's ever been in, in business, um, unless someone can tell me uh, differently. Um, and it's a, it's a huge role to take on at Hull FC. That, uh, you know, for, you know I, I, I was worried they were going to come after Chris Chester, um, at Lee, I think I said at the time. Um, and even for Chester, I think it would have been a big job. So to take someone who's got, zero experience and from what i can gather it's all to do with investors his missus his dad is it that is a, well we're not oh, uh, mate mate that's no. all we're getting into gray areas there we really are all, all all i know is that ryan briley's face at the end of the uh at the end of the game, allegedly, allegedly, game allegedly. said it allegedly said, said it said it all did it uh really really interesting that one uh, as for who are we going to go to first let's go to pearson first so this was Pearson's comments. Pleased to welcome him as the director of Uber. He brings a vast experience from a successful playing career. Big difference in terms of on-field and off-field, I would say there. Clear hunger and ambition. No issue with that. Somebody's got to start somewhere. Get that. Understand that. You know, we talked about Radlinski and other people, you know, albeit you, I think it was you who said on the final whistle, they've come through the system at that club, which yeah. helps them. Uh, he's already got to work uh, in terms of finding a head coach. Uh, I mean, you and me both listened to Pearson on BBC Humberside uh, talking about the salary cap. Now, here we go. This is, this is, is he here, the lads? Hey, hey, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We're, right. We're not, we're, we're not going to, we're going to give you a fanfare. Just, just get involved. We're, we're, we're halfway through discussion. I, right, don't, I so. don't know what happened there. Just 
the it doesn't matter. Right, we're talking about world. we're talking about all FC. So, um, so in terms of all FC, we listened to the underside, BBC underside, uh, and we were texting throughout it uh, on I think it was Friday night, and he talked about and he, and he said that it wasn't a case that he weren't spending the cap, gentlemen, at all. Okay, he, it's not that we're not spending the cap. The question should be how we've spent it. So at Super League Raw, we'll do as we're told, Adam. Let's talk about how you spent it. Um, can you believe that that shower of you know what comes to two point one million pounds? It's more than that. It's well. two point two five. I think. Yeah, I was trying to be kind. Come on, throw my bone here. But I mean, yeah. where where is that cap? I mean, he talked about Carlos Tumavari is taking up a big amount. Well, tumavari has been injury prone for years. That that can't be right. No, it's um, yeah. It's, you'd struggle, wouldn't you? But um, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> good lad, Ryan. Ryan, yeah. oh, good lad, love it. Uh, for those who are listening to the podcast, uh, Ryan Birch has said, "Reggie's here, so I'll see you next week." Genius, <laughs> genius. Uh, Davy Boy, maybe a whole FC fan. Uh, give Richie a chat. Look, chance. Look what Burgess is doing. Do you know what? I completely agree. But Burgess is coaching. This is a director of rugby. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the, the the big difference here is, and I, I hope he does really well. I, I like backing the underdog, you know, and um, you know if he if he does really well, fantastic. Um, wow, <laughs> wow um, indeed. Yeah. So again, for the podcasters out there, Callum, our Hull FC uh, member, as and again, we don't know. In the spirit of, we're, we're not taking this as gospel, but in Callum's world, and we all live in a Callum world every now and again. Carlos and Truman, four hundred and seventy k. Uh, Kai, Kai, oh, Kai Fowler's jumped him. He seems to be <laughs> 525k. So yeah. we're basically saying there that, you know, by my maths, just under a quarter of the cap is in two players. <coughs> to stand. The Truman want to sort of get, yeah. but if Ka Carlos Tumarari shouldn't be marquee yeah. money at this stage of his career, should he? No, de de definitely not. Definitely not. But I, on, on the, the, the my thing, I know we went off then. Um, there's a big difference between a player going from a player to a coach to a director of rugby. It's two different, completely different job roles. It's managing a salary cap. It's recruiting players alongside your head coach. Um, it's managing finances. It's being the bridge between the owner and the, the coach um, and a voice of reason kind of thing. And it's a massive role for somebody to undertake that um, it, with experience. So, you know, like I say, I hope the lad does really well. Um, yeah. But it's, it's going to be a, a, you know... And, and they will get on his back about it straight away if, if they don't see improvements quickly. So <coughs> whether he's bothered about that, maybe some maybe some of that two two five is going on Richie's salary. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, Joel, Joel, Joel there in the comment saying that you know what happens if he spends his money and he ends up wasting. Well, I mean, if if the accusation accusation that uh, Mr. Sale made was that you know his father in law is going to be pumping some money in, then let's be fair, it's it's rugby league manager, isn't it? You know, it's happy days, isn't it? He's he's, he's, he's tickety boo. He might not, are we on about are we on Richie Myler's? Father? Yeah, he might not he might not get to pull a Christmas cracker at the table, Reg. But you know, at the end of the day, it would be rugby league manager, wouldn't it? But you know, your take on this, you know, Richie Myler, the cap spend at all that the the, the paying maximum cap with that particular squad. I mean, we looked at the squads at the start of the season. I don't see how they get into max cap, do you? No, no, no. no. I struggle to get 2.1 million with my fantasy team. Um, but <laughs> you're part of the other, you, you do better. That's why, that's why I'm near the bottom. But um, <laughs> going back to Richie Myler, I was having a having a think about about this today, and I, I think give him a chance. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, Burgess, as I think somebody said in the chat, just uh, just as I joined from my like PC world oblivion, um, that you know, Burgess. Why a lot of wire fans didn't give Burgess a chance when he first came? I'd, I'd give him a chance. Let's face it; it can't be much worse, can it? It's, it's a big difference though between Burgess. Burgess is, is co head coach. Yeah, I agree. Um, I he's, agree. He's, he's, yeah. look, the director of rugby covers so many different aspects of the the yeah. whole sport. It's a massive role. Um, yeah, they've they've obviously some, seen something in him, Steph. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. multi-millionaire father-in-law. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, Allegedly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we don't. Um, yeah. But you know, um, that the, the, they say he's, he's obviously um, told them something that they like. You know, it's not just a, it's not just an appointment that they go. Oh, Richie, do you fancy doing this job? They've obviously talked about it and they've enjoyed what he said. So, 
Well, in the same spirit as when George Lazenby got the role of James Bond from Sean Connery, they sent him to Seville Row, and that is exactly what they've done with Richie Mal. Look at that. Hey, what a sharp shooter he looks there from Ty Richie, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Direct Rubble, this is what he's had to say. This is what he's had to say the last time. His comments at his doors. Let's, uh, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, huge rugby league club, states in history. They've lost their identity. Uh, rebuild, often used. He, he's promising youngsters at the club. We've been talking about Davey Litton all year. They haven't been given much of a chance, those youngsters. But, of course, Jack Charles yeah. has, 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 has really come onto the scene really, really well. The more quality and experienced players, uh, he's excited about the role. And, and I think that, you know, I think even Pearson himself said this, gentlemen. Pearson said that um, getting top talent this time in the season is very difficult. Marky, yeah. very, very difficult. There was, there was talk yeah. about Jackson Ace things. I just don't see that happening, quite mm. frankly. Really don't. Um, but it is, a, it is a circus, isn't it? I mean, we were, I'm with you. Give the lad a chance. But this could be one of the biggest I told you so. And, and, and I'll tell you now, if they, if they don't get this one right, we always give credit to the black and white supporters. Great attendances. They follow the, they follow the team through thick and thin. Yeah. Could this be the straw, though, that breaks the camel's back? Could this really affect the relationship with the fans if this goes wrong yeah, de definitely you know it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a big call that's the that's the thing to put him in in place and i hope for him it, like I, said, I, think, I think we all want to back the lad you know and we all want him to do well um so but i think i think it's just a case of let's let's see what happens but it is completely but different from i think divorce that sam burgess thing it's yeah. not the same it's no. completely different um, but I think one of the things he has got going for him is he'll be able to relate to the players. That that will be a given, you know, and especially the younger players as well who will look up to him uh, because he has been a you know a big player in the Super League for the last you know fifteen years, hasn't he? So the the young lads will be able to relate to him and on how to be a professional player and that kind of thing. It's just the managing the off field stuff for me. And the, uh, the it's going to be interesting, Steph. It's going to be interesting. I mean, it is. Uh, it is. Callum's, Callum's talking about the side of your glass. Don't worry about that, Callum. He actually swam in a bath full of brew dog before he came on, mate. Uh, don't you worry about that. He's a dedicated follower of, uh, of the uh, of the IPA, is Mr. Nixon. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> this is one for you, gents. Dawn uh, is, is a exclusive, maybe. Uh, she's heard that Cass are floating around Jackson Hastings for 2025. They are, you heard it first. That's uh, Dawn Baker in the chat. That'd be an interesting, that'd be a good signing for Cass if they could pull it off. Excellent signing for Cass if they pull that off. Excellent. Yeah. 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 I think we need more than Jackson out. Hastings though. Yeah. Probably. And you know what? Because we roll with the punches, let's go to Cass. Uh, Jack Broadbent, he's not a fullback, is he? Centre. Yeah, he's not a fullback. I mean, you yeah. know, that, that performance against Wigan at the weekend, um, we love Jack Broadbent, but um, he's not a fullback. And I think the other thing I would say as well is, you know, just, just as a, a little conversation starter, some of these new recruits this year, we've seen Pele and SAS have real problems in terms of staying on the field. Now Namo at, at Castleford has got a five-game ban. These imports this year, uh, the tech yeah. is settle, aren't they? Yeah. Over to you, Reggie, lad. Yeah, the eyes. Is that the um, the tackle that broke? Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it was quite. In, yeah, I, I've I've been I've been having a look at that. I've, I've I've seen the tackle, and I've been reading comments online on social media. And I think five games. I think it's a bit harsh, to be honest. Uh, I think it was it was a legal tackle, mm. and I think I think it's a case of of just. Not perfect timing, mean, that'd be the wrong thing to say, but it's just the way the, the way the tackle's been pulled off has caused the break. Yeah. And, and I think five I think five games is a bit excessive. Um if he doesn't you know, break his leg, Greg, does he get five games? No, okay. he, he, no, he doesn't no, he doesn't. Um, you know, we've seen a lot worse tackles than that get less than five games. Yeah. Um as for the imports, yeah, I mean, you know, we have had so much rain over the last six weeks. Yeah, I, I, th I genuinely now think thinking, you know, I do do think about these things a lot. I know it doesn't look like it, but um, I do think about these things and, and and wonder about these things. And I think the surfaces are so spongy, so wet that that's contributing a lot to this. People are sliding into tackles. Yeah. Yeah. People are slipping down. Yeah. You know, people are, are losing the balance. So. I think I think he's unlucky to get five games. I think yeah. it's always difficult. 
to get um, for your imports to hit the ground running. It's very, very rare that an import hits the ground running. And when we've had such a such un Australian or such, such Southern Hemisphere, un, un, un Southern Hemisphere weather over the last six or seven weeks, it's no surprise, really. I mean, that, that's my take on it. I know it's Callum's calling me in Watson in disguise. I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I would find that very disappointing if he was. I'm sure he's not being that personal to you, Greg, is, is our Callum. Uh, that'd be very, very disappointing indeed, albeit quite humorous. Uh, right, uh, let's uh, let's move on to this. This has uh, been announced. The international is confirmed. France will play England in Toulouse on the 29th of June, a double header, the women and the men. Um, we know what's going to happen going to be a cricket score for me the big thing on this is what type of french crowd can they pull that's that's the thing here that will the french supporters come out and uh fill the stadium for france england what's our thoughts where, where is it at it's at to lose it's at the welland i, I think I, I think they might get a decent crowd because they like the they like the, the rugby in Toulouse. i think you might get some yeah. catalan fans down there because they're quite close together what, what uh, was so, the day? I think, I think, yeah. 29th of June. Steph's having a flight. He's on, he's on his way. <laughs> 29th of June. That's Glastonbury weekend. Is it? Yeah. You got uh, go I'll, be, I'll be in France. <laughs> I'll be in Glastonbury. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. But no, I mean, I'll tell you what, though. That's all about the that, that particular game for me is all about attendance. The one that's really interesting is the one on the 2nd of July at the Halliwell Jones. The under-19s come and play at the Halliwell Jones on the 2nd mm. France against England. That could be a really interesting game. Yeah. Because we know that the French game is developing over in France. More players are playing yeah. over there. Young players are playing it over there. We know we've got a crop of young talent coming through in this country. Uh, you know, that are in that age bracket that are coming through. I mean, for example, the young lad McCormack at, at Leeds who got a, a yeah. fleeting uh, uh, appearance against Warrington. I've seen him again in the reserves for Leeds. And let me tell you, him and his brother, very special talents indeed. So we yes, know we've yes, got really good players coming through the system. And you know what? Even at that level, it'd be wonderful to get a really good crowd at the HJ. You know, the surrounding teams, Wigan, Saints, League. I mean, I appreciate it's quite a way to go if you're a whole fan. But, you know, those local teams, put that in your diary, 2nd of July. It'd be wonderful to see. A re I think that's going to be a very good game of rugby league. And we'll be seeing tomorrow's talent, tomorrow's Super League talent today. Gentlemen, would you be interested in going uh, to that one on the 2nd of July? Yes. Yeah, in bed. <laughs> Session. Should we do a Should we do a, a pre party, a Super League Raw pre party in the yeah. King's Head for the for it? King, King, everybody King's is watching. Head and, King's Head and Curry Ace off the same. Yeah, absolutely. The more the merrier, and we'll uh, we'll give our young lions uh, as 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 good a as good a bit of uh, support. Uh, yeah, I think that will be. That's going to be a really interesting game. I do. I do. Really mate. interesting game. Yeah, I do. I do. Right, uh, before we uh, move on to round number eight, because Super League, of course, is back, the loans continue. Steph, uh, your man, Big Ben, at Lee, rumoured to be going to Castleford. Um, truth in the rumour, do you think? Do you think that could be a possibility? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me, because he's obviously taken up a quota spot at Lee. Um, I think we need to bring some players in, which we like to do at Lee mid-season anyway. Yeah. Um, and he's, he, you know, he's been a been a good, solid squad player for us, Ben. But I think if we have any aspirations of being a top six side, we can't afford to have, you know, an average Super League player in a quota spot. Um, so we'll see. Um, it depends, obviously, if, if Cass wants him. But that is the the big rumor that's going around at the moment. And I think at the beginning of the season there was talk of him being loaned out or sold to someone else as well so it doesn't surprise me that that is the player at lead that we're potentially going to offload but you know he's been he's been good for us just not great I'm going to respond to a few of these in the chat Stuart Mason you know what we, we absolutely support this we'll just quickly go back to Willie Isa uh, yeah I think it's a great opportunity for Junior and Semba brilliant and I think Semba's looking at a unit an absolute unit I think it's going to be fascinating to see him get a run of games for, for the Wigan Warriors but yeah I mean there's Craig's Craig comment, Greg Ribby, another member of Super League Raw. He thinks that's his career done. Maybe, maybe not. Let's not forget what happened to Cooper. You know, Cooper, we thought he could be finished and done. Came back and let's be fair, was one of the best players on the field in the World Club Championship. He was a, a colossal that night. So let's hope that Willie gets back. Uh, it'd be a shame for his career. Let's be fair. <laughs> yeah. It's a brilliant yeah. career, Willie Iser. Real yeah. competent rugby league player. He deserves to go out on the field of play, being brought off after 70 minutes to a standing ovation for me. Yeah. 
every every player that takes to, to the pitch to play rugby league does not deserve to have that their, their career ended by yeah. no. an injury like that. Um, yeah. They all deserve the moment in the sun, as far as I'm concerned, whichever team they play for. Um, so, yeah, let's hope he gets back from it. Absolutely. All of us give love and support to Big Willie. We hope he is well. Uh, Kobe McGilvey, I don't know, Joel. Is Kobe going to be playing that under-19s game? If he is, that would be marvellous uh, to see. We're definitely going if he is. We're definitely going if he's Hey? So we're definitely going to Kobe's party. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll be there. free tickets if Kobe's playing. We'll Ooh. be definitely there if Kobe's there. Hey, you know, Uncle, Uncle <laughs> Freddie will be there. Incorporate. Because he's joy. Uh, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Um... Here's an update. Let's have a quick uh, chat about this. This has come a bit of, as a bit of a surprise. This is something that we don't know what OKR. are. The seniors re reunite. Lewis Senior uh, going over on loan to Hull KR today. Um, oh, no. He, I'm sorry. No, he's his Casper, isn't he? I'm getting that wrong. Um, yeah, Lewis Senior's gone to KR today, so they're not reuniting. Uh, he's gone to KR today. That's an odd one for me because Burgess flying, absolutely flying. Ryan Hall, I've not heard of any injuries. Uh, it's an odd one. It's an odd one. This. Yeah. Can he play centre? Uh, he's predominantly wing, isn't he? Yeah, but I think I've. I think somebody will correct me in the chat. I'm wrong. I think he has played centre a couple of times. But again, I've not heard of any. You know, Hiku's flying. Upper chicks there. Yeah. We know that Gilda coming back. It's a real strange one. That I, I wasn't expecting that. Was you still? I think okay. I just trying to. Get the biggest squad in Super League at the minute. <laughs> They've got so many players. Um, yeah, it's a bit bizarre. No, no, in that position. They've got they've got plenty covering the centres, aren't they? Yeah, it's an odd one. It's it an odd one. Strange. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're going it. Maybe they're going in for a bit of a squad rotation before the semi final. Yeah. And then after the yeah. semi final, maybe squad rotation saving the strike players. I don't know. Yeah. It could be. Everybody needs to calm down. I've already yeah. said I got it wrong. I know he's. I, I know it. This is a cast. <laughs> you know, is that much? Does that much going up in here, ladies and gentlemen? And all this that's going on on the screen. You know, throw the man a bone, please. Oh, right. Ryan's saying Louis going to cast. Louis, Louis going to cast, isn't he? No, I, I thought he was going to all KR. I thought he'd gone to KR. Anyway, I, I think he's gone KR. Sure, you got it wrong. Senior, he's going from Rovers to cast. Oh yeah, who, who is? In his senior. Oh, Louis. Yeah, so yeah, he's gone to Cat. Yeah, yeah, so they're reunited. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway, they're going, they're, they're reuniting. Anyway, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Well, well, one that we are getting right is Teeson. <laughs> Teeson's going from Catalan to London. I'm really, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Teeson because he's not really been given much of a chance at Catalan. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen an awful lot of him. So, again, in the spirit of London, it's going to be very interesting to see how he goes. Uh, over the next few weeks, I think it's an initial two week. I think, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how he how he fares, and probably will be in the squad for Salford this coming weekend. Yeah, and I, th I feel you know I think London needs to do this now. I think London need to start bringing more players in. Yeah, you know they're in a bit of a catch twenty two situation. Um, likelihood is they they will be relegated, whether it's whether they finish bottom or through the, the new, you know the. Yeah. The rate rules and regulations, but let's 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 bring some more plays and let's make it competitive. I think. Yeah, um, Steph. I mean, yeah. like me, you know, it's good to see young players being given an opportunity. And I think that, that that's that's where London needs to be. They're not going to spend big bucks, but I think if they can pick up some really promising young talent from around the league and give them a go, that'll benefit the home clubs. But it'll also actually be good for for us to to see again this emerging talent. We want to see emerging talent, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how he goes. Absolutely, and I think the biggest credit you can pay to London is that you know for a team that's been outside the top flight, <clears throat> the amount of players that they're producing down there at the moment is phenomenal. And this this season for me with London is definitely about you know building this youth side that can then grow as a, as one together yeah. um, with Mike Eccles as the the, the coach, and then um, <clears throat> obviously do a bit like what Wakefield have done this year, go back down. You know, re rebuild, get whatever you need to get right off the field as well, and then get a push with your your points. Callum's giving me grief. Going back on the London thing, though, Dave. You know, oh, one thing that's that's not covered or not given much credit is the, the the number of schools that play rugby league in the London yeah. area. Awesome. Yeah. And it, and it's not given the cover, obviously, because you know we have certain elements of the media that 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 just don't give rugby league any credit at all. Yeah. Um, but the amount of schools, it's a huge, it's a huge area for rugby league. 
And I, you know, I, I, I'm quite a fan of having a London team in Super League. I really am because it will develop the game, and it, it will give those schools that, that buy into it some validity. I think, and that that's what we need. Because if, guess, it, if it, if and it, if this it, season, it, mate, Greg, this season as well, they're getting behind them as well. I mean, four thousand, yeah. they're doing well with the attendances, yeah. which is even when, when I. You know, I went down to watch the, the, the women play London oh, three or four weeks ago and there was a sizable crowd there. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a bad crowd, so they're investing in it. <clears throat> so let's 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 invest yeah. in them. Let's invest yeah. in them back and let's get a good strong London side. And I think that's that's one way of you know helping to grow rugby league down down in that part of the world. Well well and, 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 and I'm just going to throw this out there. We, as the family of rugby league, you know, we love this sport. We don't want this sport going back part time. We want this sport to be here for other generations to enjoy. We have a responsibility as well. That responsibility is get through the turnstiles and watch the games because we need to show Sky that it's a viable product so that the money yeah. goes up that allows Super League to expand to 14 teams. That's only going to happen if Sky give us more money. So that the existing clubs don't feel that their money's being diluted. They're not the, the club, the 12 clubs that we've got at the moment, they're already struggling with the money they're getting. So they're not going to bring another two into the equation. So what we need to do as supporters for the good of the game is do exactly what we've been doing this year. Keep going to the game, drive the attendances up, make sure you're watching. I mean, you know, we we watch all six because we do this. We're not expecting you to go and watch all six games, but at least watch two or three. Get them up there. Get do what you can to promote our game because every viewing figure counts. Every turnstile yeah. counts. And if we can show Sky that rugby league is moving forward, that it's a viable product moving forward, we'll get more money in the next deal. That money could be used to go to fourteen teams, which comes back to your point, Greg. London being one of those teams because we'll have yes. the and the opportunity to do it. But that's an absolutely yeah. outstanding, outstanding chat. Load to talk about Fairman in the chat and Tom Ford, yeah. but absolutely all of these come into the same. I'm going, I'm going, I don't get me wrong, you know, I read a lot of stuff, you know, everything's learned in life, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and you know, win my public back here. Here's here's a stat for you, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a stat for you. You've not lost them, mate. You haven't lost them. Warrington's win against St. Helens. Get ready for this one. The last time Warrington beat St. Tellings in the Challenge Cup at St. Tellings was in the year 1900. Queen Victoria was on the throne. Warrington won 6 0. Uh, so there's a stat for you. So that's how impressive that game was. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Calm yourselves down. Was, was, right. was, was Reggie there? Uh, probably. Uh, <laughs> probably. Absolutely. Right. Okay. I, actually, I wasn't because I missed the shatterbang down there. <laughs> <laughs> right. For giving me jit the night before. <laughs> we're going to move on to round number eight. That's yeah, where we're going to move to. We're going to move to round number eight. But before we do, oh, dearie me, we've got loads of people watching us tonight. Did you miss a fantastic night last night? Because it was the first Super League Raw quiz night. It was quite an occasion. Oh, welcome one and all to the first. Super League Raw quiz. 9% Raw week. And the good news for those who didn't get the fastest finger first is that everybody is wrong. It's Alan Tate. Let's do it. Alan Tate. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you're six out of 20 after five. What, what happened yeah, there in the last yeah, five? Yeah, I got them all wrong, yeah. Well, clearly. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stinker. <laughs> Go. Hopefully you had your eyes absolutely peeled on that action. We've now got 10 questions that are going to come off the back of the action that you have just seen. And Steph's winning by four now. This is not just unacceptable. Totally mm. unacceptable. <laughs> Win this still. Hopefully everybody's still enjoying it. It's uh, better than your average Monday night. I would have thought, I would hope. Yeah. Ultimate Warriors theme song. Sammy. Bang on, sir. That's right. It's the Ultimate Warriors theme song. The girl that has been talking all night, saying that she's got everything wrong, the one that's been us a bit of karaoke all evening. Six minutes and 14 seconds. Dawn, congratulations. You are getting an official Hulkai OK rugby ball. Go and get it signed. So there you go, the Super League Raw quiz night was in full flow. There you can see Tina Holt, she was eighth on the night. Uh, Joel said it was a brilliant night. Greg Roach said he absolutely loved it. Callum was, it was brilliant. He didn't have two devices. And of course, Dawn Kirkby was the winner. She has got 
uh, a do-it-yourself signed rugby ball. It's already ready for her to collect at Craven Park shop. She's going to go and get it tomorrow. She's going to get Ryan Hall to sign it, and she's going to post it on the Facebook page. That's what she's going to be doing. The next quiz is on the 13th, Monday the 13th. We're going to put it back to 8 o'clock so people have more time to have the tea. So an 8 o'clock start for the next one. And as you saw there, it's going to be free as always to members. But if you're a non-member, I'm going to charge you £2.99. And when you consider it's £2.99 to be a member for a month and you get chances of winning grand, uh, you know, Challenge Cup tickets and this, that, the other, it's a no-brainer. Become a Super League Raw member and then you get to come to the quiz for nothing. Happy days! So uh, there you go. A brilliant night. Can I just say, Dave, you go on, mate. a fantastic job. Really Cheers, did. pal. Well done. It was good, wasn't it? It, was, it, it, was. it brought us together, yeah. didn't it? I mean, I deliberately didn't answer half the questions because, you, you know, I, I, I didn't want to take all the glory. Of course you didn't. Absolutely not. But no, it was it was absolutely brilliant. And and what was really good as well is there was a couple of kids on it as well. Sam uh, Sam was on it and he was great value on the night. Uh, I think Sean had his daughter with him, which was brilliant. And what nobody will have seen, well, because we didn't we didn't show it. But at the end, when we finished uh, and I took it off record, all the kids came on which was lovely so we had uh, it was just brilliant and for about another yeah. 10 or 15 minutes we just chatted as a community that's what super league raw is all about nobody else nobody else does what we're doing get all yourself right, over. yes i know get yourself <laughs> over to our patreon website become a member have a chance of winning tickets vouchers for your shop Cadbury's hampers at Easter. It's all going off at Super League Raw. And come and join us for the quiz night in May, the 13th at 8 o'clock. Absolutely outstanding. Everybody who was there really, really did well. Uh, yeah, okay, Craig, I'll just take that as red. Okay, so uh, we, now go, we now go back in. We now go back in. Super League is back. This is where we left it. This is where we left it. The Dragons top. Then the Wolves, Warriors, Robin Saints, and the Giants. Giants in the top six. Great effort from Huddersfield. They're in good form. They're really starting to produce, aren't they? Are the Huddersfield Giants. And, of course, they're at the bottom. The only team still awaiting their first point is London. But as the Tigers shown against Salford, never take anything for granted in Super League. I think, to a man, we all believe that London will get a win at some point during this season. We're just going to have to wait and see when that's going to be. Where did we leave this little beauty? Well, there it is. The Prediction League. All the predictions, of course, we'll be going through those in a few moments' time. This is where we left the Prediction League. Of course, just about Pippi, Mr. Schofield, by one point. But it's tightened up brilliantly. And if you remember, guys, in round number seven, the fans forum had a brilliant, brilliant week and are now right back in contention. Before we go... <coughs> Uh, each game individually and do a bit of sport and predictions and all the rest of it. It's only right and appropriate that we give our sponsor a little bit of a shout out. So here they are. He's five. Oh, oh, love that crunch. Let me add a little bit of spice. <laughs> So there you go. And again, the chat's still going great. And, uh, you know, fair play to uh, that, you know, Joel there in the chat. I'll just bring it on the screen. He said the most special bit, I think he's talking about uh, yesterday in the quiz, was the kids coming on. It was absolutely wonderful to see. Yeah. His kids and Tina's on. picking on me now. Yeah, Tina. It's probably Sam, actually. Sammy giving you a bit, which is uh, even is. better. Good on him. Good on him. Well, I did say that, you know, if you carried on like you're going, Reg, you know, he might just have to replace you one week. He's, he's geared up for that. I'm only joking. Hello. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. He'll come, oh, you're he'll come, picking on me. He'll you're come on alongside you, mate. Copping it today, Paul. He'll come. He'll come on alongside you, Reggie. Yeah, that's what he'll do. He'll come on alongside you for a bit of sport. Right, round eight fixtures. He's saying yay in the chat, so he's he's, he's well up for that. He's our Sam. So round eight fixtures. Here they come. The Rhinos against the Giants. The Warriors taking on the Tigers. Saints Hull FC. Wire take on the Leopards. Bit of a by all accounts. You know, be careful around Warrington. Some very loose Super League Raw men are going to be in pint. I mean, a pint of plenty uh, there. Broncos against the Red Devils. And then the Dragons. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, Tina. Yes, you're right. I, I, I did the badges, yes. Wolves, I forgot to put Lee's badge on. My apologies. Uh, hey, speaking on you now. You no, know, dragons against the... I know these people in their dizzy heights on their golden thrones, you know, throwing their toys out the pram. It's a disgrace. Uh, dragons, dragons against... Sorry, right, we'll see him on... We'll, give, we'll see him on Saturday and give him a good beating. Uh, dragons <laughs> against the Robins. Uh, the, the dragons <laughs> against the Robins uh, brings the curtain down 
on the weekly fixtures. Right, OK, let's get straight to this. Uh, we're going to start with that top game, uh, if we may. It's on Friday. It's the Giants going to the Rhinos. Last season, of course, 8th and 7th, respectively. That's, is that, oh, sorry, currently position, sorry. Current 8th and 7th. Uh, and as you can see there, last year at Headingley, both games went the way of the Rhinos. In round 8, it was close. It was 18-17, a really close game. Then that massive blowout, if you remember, when the absolutely did the Giants 54-0. It was a shocking display from Huddersfield. And, you know, that was the one where Burrow and his family was there before, if you remember that one. And then, uh, the, you know, round 23 at the John Smiths, the, the Giants getting a bit of a revenge, 21 points to 12, a win there. As you can see, uh, current league positions, again, sorry, the Giants are sixth, they're not ninth, uh, but Leeds are eighth. Current game odds, 11 to 10, the Rhinos, Giants 4 to 5 on and are currently in better form than Leeds. Of course, that win against Catalan will really have given them a lot of confidence. I've said their players to watch Matt Frawley and Jake Connor. The reason I picked Frawley is I do think at some point, you know, he's got to start standing up, hasn't he? He's got to, he's got to start standing up for me. Uh, Connor, we saw a bit of quality from him at the weekend, but I, but I actually yeah. gave this in the news because I do a promo for round eight and I called it the duel of fate, the Rhinos and the Giants. I think this is a must win for Rowan Smith or he's going to be following Uncle, Uncle Tony down the road. That's my personal belief. What do you think, boys? Yeah, I think uh, it's a bit a bit like the St. Helens thing, you know, in terms of not, not as bad, but Leeds expect to have, you know, a, a top six side and playoffs and, um, they soon get on top of the coaches when they when they're not in that position, um, and they have been very indifferent um, this, this season. Although I think they probably played tougher opposition than than Huddersfield so far. Um, so it's it's going to be a very interesting game, and this is the one I'm going to be tuning into uh, on Friday night. Um, yeah, 100. I think it's it's going to be very close. I'm I'm intrigued to to see what happens, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see. Well, I, I, I think I think Frawley is. Um, I think Joel said when he was at, when he was at the Giants, he was he wasn't what they expected him to be. I, I think Frawley is is a decent player, but is he Super League standard? I, I, I keep asking myself that. You've got Brody Croft alongside you. You know, Brody Croft can open up any defense, put anybody through a gap if he's got the right person next to him. And I, I, I think, and, and you know, I, I might get again, I, I might get pelters for this as I usually do, but I, I don't think Frawley's the one. I really don't. I think, yeah. you know, I, I don't think you say he's got to come good. I don't know whether he can, if I'm being honest with you. And that's no disrespect to the guy. You know, I will, I'll never disrespect anybody who crosses that white line and plays rugby league, but. I just I think Brody Croft needs somebody with a little bit more guile, a little bit more brains, brains, a bit more smart. rugby league smarts about them. And I don't think Frawley's got that. Not I think the level. interesting thing is he's going to be on decent money as well. Uh, and, and again, yeah. that justifiable piece, can you justify? And, and you know, people, you know, Leeds fans continue to say, you know, they've got young talent in their academies. Uh, and you look at what for all these, and do you know what, Warren is the perfect, the perfect one for this. Drinkwater can't get in the side now because a young academy product in Leon A's has been given a yeah. chance. He's took it with both hands and he's undroppable. And, you know, you, Leeds are similar. They've got some really good young kids that play in yeah. the halves. And, you, you know, in the same spirit of what Burgess has done at Warrington, at some point, someone's got to give. If Rolly doesn't start to deliver, give one of the kids a go. Uh, before we think... ask for your predictions, I'll just, uh, just I'll come back to you. Just two sets, Reg. Let me just give you uh, the lie of the land on this. Foster 2 is expected, um, is expected, may return for this. Uh, he's expected to be back. James Bentley out, HIA. He's not, he's not recovered enough. Tom Holwood also hasn't recovered from his HIA. He's out. We know Ash Handley's out for a, a significant period. <coughs> um, Kieran Hudson potentially back, but will, will he get in the 17? The good one is Sangari. Sangari's back after his suspension. Uh, so some <coughs> misses there. Sam Holsall is supposedly back as well for... The, for the Huddersfield Giants. So that's the lay of the land as we, as we know it on a Tuesday this far out uh, from the weekend. Um, right, let's go back to Reggie. We've got to call this one. Leeds against Huddersfield. Um, <coughs> go there and do what they didn't manage to do last year and turn over the Rhinos at Edinburgh. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Greg Roach is, has got his rosary beads out. Um, <laughs> he's playing three Hail Marys. Um, <laughs> I, I, th I think the, the, the win against Catalan um, will take a lot out of, of Huddersfield. Mm -hmm. Not many teams go there and win. And it, you know it it's, it's can be quite a sapping experience as, as we found out as Warrington fans and other teams have found out. But I don't think Leeds are firing all cylinders, and I, and I think Frawley is is it's a weak link if I, if it can be quite rude about him. They've got a few players out, but their confidence is low, and this is where Greg kicks the cat. I've gone Giants one to eight. You see, so you're seeing it quite tight. Uh, here's one as well from Joel. Joel saying that Elliot Wallace is in contention. And of course, we were waxing lyrical about Mr. Wallace earlier in the campaign. Before we bring uh, Steph in, let's just go through a few of the people that are in the chat and predicting. Ryan Birch has gone uh, the Giants 9-17. to 17. Uh, Peter Mason, good evening to Peter. Uh, he's gone Giants by 16, uh, which is, uh, again, a lot of love for Huddersfield. Don Kirkby, <laughs> a proud owner. Of the whole of KR ball, she's one to eight. Uh, Alex Sharp is absolutely <laughs> delighted that uh, Greg has picked Huddersfield because that gives his Leeds Rhinos a really good chance of winning this one. He's uh, he's gone yes, Reggie. Thank you in the chat. Um, Alex, I'll have a lovely cold pint of IPA waiting for me at Headingley next I'm time. I'm sure you will, mate. <laughs> He'll hire out the entire South Stand for you, mate. Don't you worry about that. Uh, Tina Holt uh, and Sammy Holt there. They've gone the Giants 24 12. Very specific. Love that. Uh, Peter Mason. And bring back Jackson Hastings to partner Croft. That'd be an interesting partnership. That'd be an interesting partnership. It will be a very interesting similar? partnership. Are they too similar? Too similar? Possibly, yeah, yeah, possibly. Uh, but that that said, I think Hastings has got a better kicking game. So yeah. you know, it has got a better kicking game. Yeah. Right then, okay, Steph. Uh, we've done the the ins and the outs. You've seen what the fans form have had to say there, are watching us tonight. What's your take on this Leeds Huddersfield? Yeah, like I said, I think it's going to be the the, <clears throat> the most uh, interesting game on Friday night. I think on the, the Frawley front, it's like if you got a, a half halfback from Wish uh, for me <laughs> um, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the minute there. Um, All the cut price websites are available. Yeah. Um, it's, um, you know, I'm, 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 and, and that's not, thinking, I've, I've been saying that all season, I don't think he's, 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 he's the best. Um, I think they, they, could, they could do far worse than look at Drinkwater at Warrington, you know, a bit like Lee did with uh, Brad Dwyer. Um, you know, and I'm sure Warrington will be happy with that as well. I'll, I'll drive him there myself. But I, I think he he would actually link up really well with Croft because they're two slightly different players. He's a bit more structured and then Croft's a bit more off the cuff. So I think they could work really well. So I think they could do far worse than looking at him. But um, in terms of the game, I think it will take a lot of Huddersfield in terms of going to Catalan and, and putting that massive performance in and the travel and all that kind of thing. Um, Leeds... You know they they've had a week off, um, so I think that that might just be the difference in in this game at Headingley. And I've gone Leeds one to eight. You have, uh, based on my form, Huddersfield fans should be made up with that. <laughs> well, well, maybe, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, right, let's go through the other predictions. So Gary Schofield, he has gone Huddersfield one to eight. Neil Rennox, good evening to you, Neil. Another member, uh, first time he's coming. He's going Team U. Uh, for, for Frawley uh, in the chat uh, is our Neil. Good to see you, Neil. Um, but yeah, Huddersfield 1 to 8, Gary Schofield. Uh, Joel has gone 1 to 8. Apologies from Joel. He's due back next week. We wish Joel well. He's a bit, un bit, bit under the weather at the minute, is our Joel. We wish him well. He's in the chat, though. He's watching us. He's hearing spirit, is our Joel. Uh, and uh, Fans Forum, they've gone Huddersfield 1 to 8. A lot of love. I've gone Huddersfield. So everybody's going 1 to 8. I'm going Huddersfield 9 to 17. I'm going, I'm going Huddersfield by. 9 to 17. I think at the moment, I just don't know what to make of Leeds. I really don't. I think they're missing some heavy artillery up front, um, you know, in this one. The, the Handley one's a massive blow. I mean, that is just huge. I mean, he's been yeah. far and away their best. <laughs> it's not just his tries, it's the work he does out of backfield. And I've never, ever been sold on Foster Tua. Never been. I don't think he's put a shift in for the, the Blue and Amber ever since he come. Uh, quite frankly, he's the Darren Anderson of Leeds Rhinos. He's the biggest sick note I've seen. So, for me, not convinced on David, I have to say. Sorry, David. Uh, that's that in conversation gone. Uh, but what I would say is, <laughs> in, in the same spirit of Texoy, I called Texoy, didn't I? I've been saying it all season. Called it. And there you go. He's yeah. been 
Kai Bost. There's a few. There's a few very similar. A few he very similar quality. players. Yeah, he wasn't of the quality. So Hanley's a massive loss. Uh, I think the, the struggling in the middle unit, and I just think that the confidence. <coughs> to continue momentum going into the semi-final. They will not want to take the foot off the accelerator. They'll want to keep pushing forward. And do you know what? At the moment, I'm just going to go on to Phil 9-17. Joel said, wow, in the chat. Yeah, I'm going with you, buddy. I'm going with you. I'm going 9-17, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Right, we now go to, this won't take us long, uh, Wigan Warriors against the Castleford Tigers. Um, 60 points to six. Challenge Cup for final. Wow, just simply wow. And if you look at the last, uh, the two meetings last year as well, uh, again at the jungle, 36 points to nil, uh, and then 48 6. I mean, that's not good. It really isn't. Look at the odds one to a thousand. Yeah, you're not misreading that. Wigging one to a thousand on uh, doesn't bode well that for the, uh, for the Castleford Tigers. Uh, I think Broadbent's got to have a bigger game. I think he's got to come back. Fighting, that's why I put him as the the one to watch. And because Field, I mean, Field actually was not, you know, he wasn't amazing in that quarter final. It was the supporting cast that that, that really uh, shone. So maybe this is the moment where Mister Field uh, takes uh, takes his place and, and and really romps home against the Tigers. But I mean, yeah, a thousand to one, just simply wow. Right, Wigan, let's uh, go there. Ethan Havard may be back, but that's good news. Uh, for yeah. Mike Cooper. That's good news for Wigan. And Cooper. Cooper might be back for this one, which again is, you know, interesting in terms of those yeah, middle I'd, unit I'd positions. start them both on the bench. And, and Yeah. Well, it's a good game for him to come back, isn't it? Yeah, start them both on the bench and ease yeah. them in. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as for the Castleford Tigers, you know, big problems for Castleford. Uh, George Griffin, he could be back. He could be back, George Griffin. Uh, George Lawler, they're not going to be risking him, and rightly so. So George Lawler's yeah. not there. Liam Watts is back from suspension. That's good news. No McShane. He's not expected to play. He's expected the week after, maybe the week after that. Massive blow for Castleford. In the same spirit as we were talking about Ash Handley for Leeds a moment ago, Josh Sim out for the season. That's a massive blow because he has played yeah. really, really well. Good evening, Steph. Uh, he's been playing really, really well. And again, I don't know how much um, Alex Mellon as well. Uh, shoulder to be confirmed. He might be gone again, which should be a... Blandy Usty might get a game. A right, yeah, right blow there for Casper. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, right, so let's not dwell on it. Um, I can't remember what Schofield said. I think he says like 50-odd points he, he saw Wigan putting on him uh, at uh, the DW. Steph, will start with you on this one. Wigan Cass, let's let's in the interest of time, go for it. Massacre. Yeah. yeah. Is he playing? Yeah. Yeah. He's the new signing from New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> Friday, <laughs> Friday, the, Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, sorry, Cass fans. It's it's not gonna be pretty, is it? And hence why I'll be tuning no. into the uh Huddersfield and Leeds game for this one. <laughs> Uh, but I will I may, may have a try. If you want to bet on the whole of Wigan's back line to win, then uh, to score a try, sorry, this week, then that's probably a good uh, little tip. It from, probably uh, is. What's that group there? Yeah. Yeah, you know we were talking to the WhatsApp group. Another great reason to become a member. WhatsApp groups are great bit of a laugh when the games are on. If you're not yeah. at the match and you're watching it on your armchair and you've got the WhatsApp group going, the banter's there, the chat's there. Greg, Greg Roach said it's like being at the game with your mates. It's just good banter <laughs> watching the game. Great, great stuff. So are you going to put a number on it? I mean, you're going 18 plus, but go on. What what, what do you think? Where, where could Wigan get to? 40, 50, 60? Where do you see it? Uh, I think they'll, they'll break the 50. They're going to break the half century. Greg, over to you. Well, you know. Kieran, we need Kieran to kick, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had that Kieran. chat, didn't we? No, yeah, we did. Harry Smith to kick because he's in my fantasy team. <laughs> Imagine that doesn't make much difference anyway, does it? Actually, on that point, Greg, good point. Don't forget, you've got to do your substitutions for the fantasy team before midday on Thursday. So remember, you know, season ticket up for grabs for the winner. You know, Ryan's getting a sweat on there. If Tony Pennington's watching, you know, I've just reminded Tony. Check his team. Well, Tony's uh, making his subs. He's he's Tony's, he's Tony's making his subs. Yeah, making his subs. So, yeah, yeah. There's a season ticket up for grabs uh, for the winner of the Fantasy League this year. Again, another great reason to be a member. He was just, just giving loads of prizes away this year. Uh, but, yeah, sorry, Greg. I had to say that. Get your Fantasy team subs done. Go on, mate. Over to you. 18 plus, Wigan. But by what? Where do you think they'll get to? 40, 50, 60? Oh, God. It could be. It's, it's, it, they, I, I agree with Steph. It's going to be 50 plus. 
and and and, and Casford could quite possibly be nilled. Yeah, yeah, you, you you could see that. I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody's going. Joel's goal says cricket score. Um, you know, Ryan Birch saying eight thousand and sixty-five plus. Alex, but, well, Alex has made Alex has made a good point there. Actually, Alex, do, do, Alex, do we give do we give rest any players? But they're not because you know Cooper coming back, you know, and Semba coming in. You've got young Harvey Hill. I mean, the, you you just look across that Wigan team. Mm. Yeah. And, and, I mean, possibly. Oh, Neil, I've been really impressed with. Yeah, I, I think you've been brilliant at Wigan this season. Yeah, it's superb, O'Neill. Neil. Yeah. I mean, could they afford to put like a Fairman in? Yeah, they probably could. They probably yeah. could. I, I, they'll still win eighteen plus. So yeah, they might. There might be a bit of that. But I think what what we've seen from Pete, which is admirable, I, I don't think. I think the London one will have scared him a little bit. He did that at London. He, he made wholesale some really big calls at, at London, and it could have. I mean. They, they, they walked it in the end, but there's a big sweat on after 50, 55 minutes at London. So yeah. maybe yeah. if he's going to make changes, there might be just one or two is what I would say. And they still should have more than enough, uh, unfortunately. I have noticed that we haven't seen much of Andy and Sue all year. I think that they've just lost the will, Andy and Sue. I wish them well if they are watching, but our cast friends from many a season, uh, they just don't seem to be around this I think, year. I think Andy and Sue were there at the start, weren't they? They were, mate. They were with I'm us sure when, when it was just me and time. you and it was a Zoom, and it was just no production, no nothing, just me and you. Those were the days. They, they were talking to the millions. They, I know, yeah. They had the old, they had the two <laughs> or three that came along. Uh, but anyway, everybody's gone wigging. 18 plus. Let's move on to the next Friday night game. And it's another I mean, this is intriguing. It's intriguing. Uh, it's got to be said. You know, we'll have to see. Change of coach. Always interesting. 10th in Super League. Plays uh, 3rd in Super League. Um... That was last year, of course. This year, fifth plays 11th. Uh, I mean, the tail of the tape. Who can forget that game at the MKM, though, last year? Remember that? 34 points to six. Nobody gave Hull FC a prayer. That that was the one where Wellsby, if you remember, in the uh, in goal, had a right mare. And I think it was Truman that put it down. Uh, there's a bit. Hey, there you go for you people who doubted me. There's knowledge. Uh, happy days. But, you know, Saints at home. 2012, 30 points to 12. They are going to be really a Saints. They're going to be reeling. I mean, Wellens will have given a serious kick this week. Um, 1 to 50 on, 12 to 1. Hull not doing too well, let's be fair. Jack Wellsby had a shocker, I thought. He was absolutely almost targeted by Warrington. And, he, and, and I'm just going to say it again. Jack Wellsby, one of the best players in the league. But let me tell you now. He was well and truly put to bed in that game at the weekend. They targeted Wellsby. They got under his skin and it affected his game. You know, kicks going out on the full. You saw his face when Harrison went in. They proper riled Wellsby up and he didn't like it. Jack Charles, uh, again, in the spirit of what we're talking about, these young people coming through. Really looking forward to yeah. seeing more Jack Charles as well. Uh, before yeah. I bring you in, Reggie, uh, Percival expected... To come back, so that's a positive. That's a pos positive for him. Uh, Matty Lee's, of course, still out. Wing, uh, Wingfield out. Warmsley out with a hamstring. Uh, not too bad. We're hearing. He tweaked it. It's not. I'm not heard it's a tear. Uh, and Kurt Sivanen probably will be rested on this. And again, when you think we said this about Willie Isa, if you're going to lose a player, this is a place where Saints can't afford to lose a player. They've got so much in that back row. Uh, they're not going to be too worried about Kurt Sivin sitting here a couple of weeks out. As for Hull FC, oh, take your pick, lads. Brad Fast, Jake Truman, uh, Harvey Barron, Jack Walker could be back. He's 50-50, Jack. That'd be a big bonus for him if Jack Walker's back the way he was playing early doors. Tim Avari's still out. Uh, Danny Houghton, more than might be back, might not be back. Uh, we're hearing on that. Of course, Stavely out for the season. Ashworth's out till round 13. Sal's out because he's banned again. Uh, Jack Brown, he's not going to be here this week. Of course, the other new Brown and Hoy have gone. So it's going to be a, a really Fred Bear squad. Uh, there's no <laughs> about that uh, on this one. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's uh, the, the ins and the outs. Uh, I, just put this up, Dawn. Has Dufty removed Wellsby from his pocket yet? I don't know. I don't know, Dawn. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> who has it? He went to Costa to buy a latte and Jack fell out. I don't know. I don't know how true that is. It's just, you know, CCTV cameras in Stockton e I believe. Anyway, that's by the by. Uh, Greg, uh, I'll start with you on this one. Saints, bruised, battered. Catalan, I mean, oh. lost to Catalan. This one against Warrington is going to sting. They're coming up FC. So Are FC going to bear the brunt? Absolutely raging. Yeah. They're going to be on fire for this one. Um, 
you know what a what a what a time if you are a struggling team to go and face somebody like Saints. But it might galvanise Hull. They might see they might have watched that Warrington performance and and see that Saints can be beaten. Saints can be beaten at home. If you if you nullify the the threat of, of the big forwards, if you face up to them, then they can be beaten. So I'm going for Saints 18 plus. No real surprise there. Saints, uh, Saints Hull FC. Steph, where are you going with this one, my friend? God, that, that was laughing at my right play by Neil. <laughs> well, you know what? I saw I saw a post on Facebook saying that he, they actually said I hope he's bringing his boots with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is fair. Why not? Why not? Why not indeed, yeah. No, no, I think I think the uh, Saints will be playing playing the new French lad here, uh, cricket score. Uh, oh, no, oh, no, no. Um yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's painful. Thanks, everyone. Night, that's night. Painful, that. That's painful, that. Real painful. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, this is, this is going to be another um, another big score, this one. Yeah. Saints are going to be uh, 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 wounded from uh, from last week. I think they want to uh, put an example down here and show what they're actually made of. Absolutely. Lee, I'm going to come to that in a minute. We'll have a little conversation around that. Get some questions in the chat. We will answer them. I'm going to answer that one in a minute. We'll have a little chat about that, Lee. Well done, Lee Partington, there in the chat. Right, let's just finish off the Saints. Everybody's gone Saints 18 plus. I don't think anybody can see it any anywhere else. Uh, Neil Reddox is calling you a taxi, Steph. Uh, Neil, uh, he's actually he actually needs a lift home on Saturday from Warrington. So if you book the Uber from Warrington on Saturday, I think you probably fancy uh, thank you for that taxi. Quite uh, uh, there's 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 plenty more giving me good comments there. I'm Don't sure. just get the bad one. To be fair, you're normally good for a wise crap, mate, but that wasn't one of your best. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, every yeah, yeah, Joe Root's got a decent taxi company over at Headingley. You might be able to uh, use it. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Right, let's uh, just because we've got a bit of time. Uh, Lee Parkinson's thrown one in. It's an interesting question. This, based on what happened this weekend, who will be higher in the table after this week? Uh, after in the table this week, Wigan or Saints? Uh, is that? For, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go season here. Who'll be higher in the table after after this week, Wigan or Saints? Um, because they're both level on points, aren't they? Yeah, Wigan have got a game in hand though. Yes. Yeah, but the level on points at the moment. So let's go to the league. Let's have it. Let's let's bring that up. Here we go. So as you can see, uh, there's the Warriors 110, and the and as you can see, Saints 80. So I think on points difference, um, you'd probably say we're going to assume. So let's change that a little bit. After seven rounds, after what we've seen in the Challenge Cup, Saints Saints beat Wigan and beat them well. Uh, you know, and Good Friday it was a great great game of rugby league. These two are still the favourites for. the the league leaders, the, 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 you know, forget the Challenge Cup. Challenge Cup's Challenge Cup. Warren had a great win, but these two teams are still the two favourites. And this is why I don't understand why Saints have gone rogue. The Saints fans have gone rogue. Just don't get it at all. These two are the teams that, for me, are the favourites to finish in the, with a league leader's shield. Based on what we've seen, Wigan, they've turned Wigan over. Um, have... Do Saints realistically have a chance of winning the Shield this season? What? Are we, are we talking about? I thought the question was. After yeah, but the, the, yeah, the, the, the points difference. It's going to be Wigan because Wigan will put a bigger points difference uh, on cast than Saints will. So yeah. I have to put it a little bit. Wigan will be higher at the end of this weekend, and Wigan will be higher at the end of the season. Do you think? It's easy as that. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the debate, Greg. Come again next week. Right. It's, it's great to have you. Well, if, 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 if we will let me in, I will do. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I mean, it's, I think it's a good question because I, I still think there's a lot of rugby in Saints. I think that, and the fact that now you know they've got two breaks, they wouldn't, they don't want the breaks, but they're going to have two breaks in the semi final weekend. And you know, with the injuries they picked up, the like of, of, of Warmsley, etc., that'll help them uh, in terms of league leaders. And especially if we can get to the final, you know, that'll probably help Saints in terms of league and, and, and all the rest of it. But do we think that, I mean, somebody put in the chat, I don't know who it was, forgive me, you know, Saints in crisis. It's amazing that we're saying Saints are in crisis when they're two points off the top of the league and they've been not... Saints aren't in crisis. They're they're not in crisis. crisis. I wish Lee were in crisis. Yeah. Exactly. Can, can, do we think St. Helens can topple Wigan for the Shield? Not for the grand final, for the Shield. They, they, they can. Do I think they will? No. Um, I've watched both teams play this season against my team. Um, very close game against Centellins with um, at, at the Totally Wicked 
you know, they, they were the, the right team to win, but very close game. Wigan absolutely battered us yeah. at our place. Yeah. You know, um, so from watching both teams live this season, I, I think Wigan are a step above. And that's not just St. Helens, that's everybody. Um, and that, as a Lee fan, is obviously horrendous for me to say. Um, but you've got to give credit where credit's due. And I think they've got the best team. Um, and I think Alex made a good point. I don't even think Saints will be second. I think Catalan will be second. Saints will be third. Well, our friend Craig Rigby is going wire. He thinks it'll be a wire wigging uh, top two, which uh, I'd, I'd snatch your hand off, Craig. I'd snatch your hand off with that it's, one. It's an interesting point being made, though. Yeah. If Wigan get, well, this wasn't the point, but it was kind of hinted at. If Wigan get to Wembley, when do they fit that game in hand in? Because wow. last year, I think the game in hand was played Challenge Cup final. I think, I think they're just going to give it to Lee and just write it off. Well, be very, yeah. probably your best chance of winning against Wigan <laughs> based on your current form, isn't it? Against them. Yeah, right. Probably, sure. definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But personally, if, if Warrington and Wigan get to Wembley, I'd make Wigan play that league game on the Friday night. Of course, mm. you, would. Of course you would. And uh, just for just yeah. just in case anybody's interested, Greg will be tipping Wigan for that final as well. Uh, oh, if, <laughs> all day long. All day long, the Midas touch that is Greg. Start calling him gold, gold predictor. I, I am the man with the Midas touch. <laughs> He's the man, the man with the Midas touch, gold predictor. <laughs> I, I'm still picking OKR okay for the Challenge Cup. Right, right. Mate, mate, you could be right, mate. You could be right. Outstanding stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, like I say, if you've got a good question, we'll 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 have a little chat about it. Not a problem at all. Well done, Lee. Enjoyed that. Right, we now go to the game at the HJ. We'll be there, boys. Warrington Wolves taking on the Lee Leopards. Last year, it was 1-1 one, one in the series. Uh, two games, 38-20. Because of the pre-seasons, it's like we played played them loads of times, but, you know, in competi on competitive matches, it was only the two. Um, and Lee won very, very well, uh, it has to be said, at the LSV. We were there that night, courtesy of Mr Sale. It's fair to say, Lee got off to a shocker this year. The injuries have been massive for them. We're in only 2-11, to 11, um, 4 to 1 Lee away. Um, George Williams, Lachlan, I think Lachlan Lamb is, him and Moylan are key. Uh, Williams is just... You know, if, if that same Williams turns up uh, at the Halliwell on Saturday that played in the Challenge Cup, then we're in for a treat because there's nothing better than seeing a player at the top of his game. What I would say, and I'm going to, permit me, I'm going to go first on this one, boys, if you don't mind. Um, so I'm, bad, thank you very much. Uh, and I normally let you boys go first. But I'm, I'm going to have a moment. Let me have a moment. Uh, you know, it have a moment, Dave. Have a moment. Why not? I'm a, I'm a bit, do you know what? I think, you know, we heard Greg in the early parts of the season go on about London. I mean, how many times did we hear Greg Cott talk about London being a critical game for the Warrant Wolves? <laughs> and all, and, and, uh, yes, you, Greg. Yeah. Greg Rose. Oh, you, no, you, Greg. And he was always about London. The, London. the London game was going to be the critical game. And I kept saying, what are you on about? This is a massive game for Warrington because they've just beaten Saints brilliantly well. Brilliantly well. They're going up against the lead team that are down on troops. But Lee have still got quality. You talk about mindset. You talk about culture. You talk about where Warrington are currently at. If Warrington go and beat Lee on Saturday, that for me is a really good test passed for Warrington in terms of where their mentality is at. Because they could have gone out on a bender this week for happy days. We've made it. They've done it before. Right, here we go, lads. We've turned the corner and come crashing down. And Lee have been in most games, this <coughs> many games that Lee have not been in. They will be competitive no matter what team they put on that field of play. So for me, this is a critical, critical game for the Warrington Wolves. I do think Warrington will win it. I think, you know, I, I'm going the wire. I'm going wire 9 to 17. Uh, and I'm doing that because of who wouldn't, based on league positions, where we're currently at, current form. Everything points to a Warrington 9 to 17. But I'm telling you now, I would not be surprised if hearts are in mouths and this is a bit of a grind. And, it, you know, it would not surprise me 60 minutes in if we weren't in a behind. This is this is going to be a real test for their mentality. Um, go on, Greg. I'm going to bring you in on this because I mentioned you in London. Your thoughts yeah, on... The reason I mentioned London was the mentality. I know I got pelters yeah. for that. You did, yeah. It was the mentality thing that in the past, Warrington have gone to places like London like Huddersfield when they were struggling and they've got beat. 
you know, Huddersfield hadn't won a game in Super League in 2005, I think it was. Yeah. They'd lost 20 odd on the bounce. We went there and, and they battered us. Yeah. And that, that's what I meant by that mentality thing. That was the big game. Mm. And I, I agree with you on this one. Yeah. But I don't think Sam Burgess will let that happen. Yeah. I think he's a different kind of coach. And I'm not saying that because we're, we're second or first, second, third in the league and we just beat Saints. I think it's become quite apparent over the last few weeks that this is a diff, there's a different mentality about why. I'm not saying they're going to win Super League. I'm not saying they're going to win the League Leader Shield or the FA or the FA Cup or the Challenge Cup. I just think there's a there's a bit of a mentality about them now because Sam Burgess won't let that happen. And I, I know the the Lee fans are starting to get a bit of a sweat on here now, but I've gone I've gone Warrington eighteen plus, but eighteen. Okay. 18 plus. I heard champagne corks <laughs> popping in Lee there. <laughs> but 18 plus, but only as you say, I think Warrington will pull away in the last 15, 20 minutes. I think it might be a tight contest. Uh, I'm going to deal with that now, Dawn. So Dawn's just in the chat. I'll deal with that now. Uh, so this, these are the runners and riders. Uh, first of all, Warrington. Uh, Josh Drinkwater, of course, is there, but he's just not getting a game. Uh, Zane Buzz grows out. He's going to be back around 11, around 11 or 12. The way Jimmy Harrison's playing. Wow. Wow. Jimmy Harrison, take a bow this season. He's full. Oh. Wow. Uh, Paul Vaughan back. That's big. He's had a week off as well. He's rested. But Ben Curry out. Um, so Ben Curry not there, but Crowther. Having, having said that, I thought Crowther yeah. was absolutely immense on Sunday. Yeah, yeah he was. He, he didn't get the plaudits he deserved. He yeah. was superb. And Philbin. Crowther. Yeah. And Philbin. Yeah. But Fitz, yeah. how Fitzgibbon or Harrison didn't get man of the match. I'm completely confounded. No. Harrison, I mean, some of his some of his runs, and 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 he didn't come off. He didn't come off better on a few of them. He just basically ran as hard as he could. Sometimes he got yeah. the better of it. Some of it he didn't, but he just didn't take a backward step. Um, Gareth O'Brien, uh, no, he's out. So basically, the, the, this is this is Lee um, again. Steph, you're close to this, so if I'm wrong on any of this, let me know. No, Nathan Wild, Ipape's still out. We're hearing. Next next week, more two weeks. more weeks, one or two more weeks. So he, he'll be back perhaps the week after. No Briscoe, but even if he was back Briscoe, he wouldn't be getting in the side. I'm sorry, Anley's undroppable. Uh, Keenan Brand, he's not going to be there. Robbie Mulhern, he's out until about round 12, we're hearing maybe a little Big miss. That's a big miss. O'Brien, the same. Um, so still no Asiata, still no Pape Mulhern. Now an O'Brien also gone. Um, big problems that for the Lee Leopards. Um, I'll come back to your comment, Dawn Baker, in a minute when we finish the Warrington Lee game. Um, Steph, over to you, mate. I'm going I'm going 9-17 wire. Greg's gone 18 plus. Just for your information, Schofield's gone 9-17 wire. Joel's gone 18 plus the wire, as has the fans for him. Where do you see, mate? Yeah, I, I think um, I think you're, you're absolutely right in terms of th th this is the game that's going to define Warrington's season for me. And, and it's not just because Lee are a half-decent side, in my opinion. I just think this is a potential last year you would have slipped up on. And um, I, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I, th I think that the, the team is playing so well at the moment. And even after that massive, you know, it, the, the jubilation of winning the semi-final, the quarter-final, sorry, getting to a semi-final of the cup and everything, I still don't think it's going to affect Warrington in this game. Um, Lee have only in the league lost by one try in every game apart from the Wigan game mm. so I do think it's not going to be a blowout uh, even with the injuries we've got and I think yeah. the the whole KR game showed that because I think everyone was expecting us to go to whole KR and get an absolute pace in. Um, and the, the boys showed some real good effort in that game and you know did, did, it, did, it, did the Leopards badge proud I thought in that game and I think they'll do the same uh, at Warrington on Saturday um, but I do, I do think it's going to be a Warrington win. I think it'll be by a couple of tries. So I've got nine to seventeen Warrington. Good man. Uh, Neil Reddox is saying that. that's a really good point. Neil, uh, Neil, back in the chat. Lee should play Ardacre at fullback. Completely agree. Moylan needs to go back to six and uh, Chamberlain into the centre. There's one thing that we learned about Matt Moylan. He's not a fullback. Uh, that is absolutely certain. Oh, um, I'm going to go to Dawn in a minute. I mean, there's a couple of we don't know who you are because you're you're obviously on the fans forum page, not on the. Super League Raw page. Listen to yourselves. How do you say there's going to be an upset? This is utter rubbish. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. 
We're all saying Warrington are going to win. Right, this isn't rubbish what we're talking. I'll always challenge it. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what they're getting out there saying well, of some rubbish guys. Well, Can you, well if it's Warrington, if it's the fact that we're saying that Lee could come and surprise, go and tell that to Catalan. Huddersfield went and surprised them. Go and tell that to Castleford and Salford. This is rugby league. If you don't turn up with the right mindset in rugby league, you get turned over. So this mm -hmm. is a valid conversation. We're saying that Warrington should win. They should win. Everything points yeah. to a Warrington win. 100%. For whatever reason, if Warrington, if Warrington don't go with the right mentality on Saturday, let me tell you now, Lee have got enough quality to yeah. do exactly what happened to uh, to Salford at Cass and exactly what Huddersfield did to Catalan. Super League, Rugby League is a brutal sport and you've got to turn up. If you don't turn up with the right mindset, you're gone. So I'll always look, challenge... Look what happened to Saints on Sunday against us. Uh, for all intents and purposes, everybody was saying Saints had walked that game. Yes. So I just whoever it is, I'm not going to give you pelters, but just quantify what you mean by it's a rubbish. Just just Correct. let us know what you, what what point we're making. We're not having a go at you. Yeah. Uh, we just we just want to know why you think we're talking rubbish, mate. That's that's all we're saying. Absolutely. TGM. What, any, any point is valid as long as you quantify it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like I say, in the spirit of back and forth, we'll be back and forth with you. TGM. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Texoy to Cass? They're already unwell enough, mate. Uh, I, I don't think they need to uh, to get any more under the weather, quite frankly, uh, is what I would say to, to TGN. Sorry, but sorry, Tex. Your dad can bleat all he wants on Twitter for me, quite frankly. You've had your opportunities. You have many opportunities at Little FC. At no point did I see a Super League player. Sorry, I'd rather a young kid get an opportunity like Davey Litton, because I think Davey Litton yeah. would have been playing a lot better for Little FC than Tex Hoy was. He's, he's one of the guys that uh, we bumped into at Old Trafford, Dave. Oh, top man, TGN. Good lad. Good to have you with us, my friend. Uh, we were on good form that day, if you remember. I sure don't video remember that day, that to be one. honest. It was a great <laughs> one, TGN. I had a few manga unchained. Great to have your company, TGN. Great to maybe become a member, you know, get closer to the action. It'd be absolutely marvellous to have you. Right, let's get back into, let's get back into the games. Uh, we now go to London. London against Salford. Um... Again, we all think at some point London could nick a game. Uh, if they're going to nick a game, this is one of them that they've got to look at as an opportunity. As good as Salford have played from large parts of this season, that Castleford game shows that, like I said, anything can happen in a rugby league match. London have been competitive to a point. They've had they've had little glimpses. They've, 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 they've stayed in games. I mean, the Wigan one's a great example. They were in that up to 60 minutes against the World Club champions. So you've got to give them, you've got to give them, a, 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 you know, they very nearly beat all FC at the MKM. So they've got it in them. They've got it in them. Uh, 12th place, 7th, 10 to 1, 1 to 25, uh, the Salford Red Devils for this one. Uh, how can it not be Tim Lafay? 18 tackle busting round number round number seven. Absolute colossal. Tim Lafay, what a player. Uh, all I will say is, Good luck, Akeem Maloudi, on this one because uh, you're going to be coming up against Big Tim and that is not something that I'd want to be doing, quite frankly. Uh, James Meadows, I think he's a class player, this kid. Uh, I think he'll be a super yeah. player somewhere next next year. And at some point, I think James Meadows, mate, I think he's going to have a wow, a wow game. And that wow game will probably when London pick up a point. Um, that's, that's my... Uh, perfect one. I do. Oh, he, he was dressed in the onions. Oh, he's the onion man. Remember the onion man? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He's the onion man. Oh, top, top stuff. You know, who you are now. Lovely stuff. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> James incredible. Meadows to Leeds next season. Maybe James, hey, I thought, do you know what? Good mate? Shout. It's it a good shout. They could do a lot of work. You spot on. They could I, do I said that earlier in the season. Yeah, I agree. You know, 12 months of Super League under his belt. Do you know what? That is a very, very and, good uh, shout. Ollie thingy as well. Is it Ollie? The, the Ollie Leyland, Leyland, yeah, young Ollie Leyland, Leyland, yeah. I mean, Stu Melton there, Broncos could win it. Do you know what? They could do. Uh, Peter Mason, after 60 minutes, Salford run away by 20 plus. Again, that has been what's been happening, hasn't it? They've been quite competitive, and then in the end, they've been blown out. Steph, I'm going to start with you, but before I do, uh, let's just quickly go through it. it. No real new injury concerns. Joel Skull saying he'd have Ollie Leyland at Huddersfield. I think, you know, quite a few people would again. Low centre yeah. of gravity, the Burrow Hayes type of player. Uh, obviously, I'm not comparing. <laughs> Before anybody starts giving me pellets, I'm not comparing Leon Hayes to Burrow. I'm not, okay? But that type of not player. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. That type of player, low centre of gravity, good good, good stuff. Uh, as for um, Salford, um, still no Sidlow. Ankinson's going to be around 13, as is Brad Singleton. Dudson, 
not 100%, but should be okay. Bowen might miss this week. He might be back next week. So a couple of couple of absentees there for Salford. Not many. Uh, they should be able to cope with them. Um, Steph, I'll start with you. Um, London, Salford. Could it happen? Could this be where London post the first points? No. Um, so, so, so Salford are going to win. Coming. Um, <laughs> Salford are going to win easy. Um, there's a bit of history with this one, actually, because Mike Eccles actually started as the conditioning coach at Salford. So, um... <laughs> So Craig Rigby's having a little bit of banter here. Yeah. The WhatsApp banter has come on to Super League Raw Weekly. <laughs> Callum, your predictions are still running the national, is what Craig says yeah. to Callum. So uh, good, <laughs> good banter. Carry on, Steph. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just saying that there's a bit of history here because Mike Eccles actually started his rugby league career at Salford as the conditioning coach uh, there. Um, so he's obviously got a bit of an affinity with Salford and I'm sure he'll have London well up for it and I'm, I'm sure they'll put in a decent performance again but Salford will just have too much for them um, in, in, in the backs more than anything um, and I think it's going to be 18 plus okay. Greg? 18 plus Salford I'm going to surprise you here uh, so uh, everybody's got 18 plus by me I'm going 90-17 I, I, I think Salford win but I just think I'm going to give Mike Eccles and his team a little bit of respect here. Um, maybe just maybe they'll keep him within 9 to 17. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, that's where I'm going to go. Tina Hall, London 8, Salford 2. That'd be an exciting game, wouldn't it, Sammy? Um, we're not we're not going to that one. Uh, but hey, if you're right, do you know Is what? Is that after 10 minutes? Uh, but possibly. Do you know what? If he's right, you can have a bigger amper. Uh, you know, I'll, and that'll be out of my own pocket. Um, yeah, I, I mean, not many people are going. Uh, nobody is London still only got seven. To, is London still? Oh, they've got, they're on about the bets. We're not going there. Uh, yeah, I think everybody's going Salford. I'm going Salford. I'm going to go 9 to 17. Right, the last game. This has been chosen. I put it out there as a poll today. It was a toss up. Which was your game of the week? The Duel of Fates leads against Huddersfield and Rowan Smith. Is he going to be, you know, if he was to lose, would he get sacked, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Or was it the top end of the table clash, which is uh, quite mouth watering, really? And this is the one that you've chosen. So, game of the week, the 30 minute analysis show that will be uploaded on Friday, ladies and gentlemen. 30 minutes of deep analysis. We will look at every position. We'll look at how these people are, are playing. We'll have had the squads by then. We'll predict our, the starting lineups. We'll do all the usual good stuff. So game of the week is back this week. A full deep dive into this game. Catalan Dragons against Hull KR. Right, let's take a look at last year. Of course, Catalan second and runners up in the grand final. Fourth, OK, had that late surge last year. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Round five in Perpignan, 26 points to 12 to the Dragons. Round 15 in Perpignan, 38 points to four the Dragons. And then in round 24, Hull K, of course, that late surge. They pit the Dragons 26-18 at Craven Park. Great effort, that one. Current league position, Dragons top. Hulk KR fourth again. The bookies have got this tight. Two to five, two to one. Um, really, really tight there. Both in great form. Uh, of course, the Hulk KR doesn't take into account the Challenge Cup. So with the Challenge Cup thrown in, they're on a four-game winning streak. Catalan are on a four-game winning streak in Super League. Of course, they lost at the Challenge Club. Jaden Nicarima, first game back after injury. I think he'll be better in this one against KR. And for me, you know... Yes, Mikey Lewis is in great form. Yes, he is. So is Iku, but Nile Levels has been a revelation. A revelation. Yeah. He's just been incredible. Since he's gone back to fullback, it's, it's for me, revolutionised the strike. He's been outstanding as Nile Levels, and we're going to give him his due, and rightly so. Uh, Catalan, uh, Desiree could be back. That'd be big. Desiree, I think they missed Desiree. I think off the bench, Jordan Desiree is a big unit for Catalan and, and does a good job. Mickey McAloran might be back. Another big bonus for him. Abdul's out. Uh, they haven't said how long, but it's going to be a few weeks that at the very, very least. And Tom Johnston may be back if he's passed his AH, HIA protocols. We don't know if he has or not. Like the Bentleys and the Percivals, they might give him an extra week just to make sure there's yeah. no issues there. But Johnston will <coughs> be back as well. Great news for KR. George King will be on the plane. Uh, he's back. I mean, he was not expected back for another three weeks. But he's actually recovered quicker than expected. Whether he gets into the 17 is another question. But George King is on the plane. Gildar may or may not be. Again, HIA protocols. You know, uh, We know Oliver's had a few issues there in his career. So it'll be interesting to see if he's back on his feet. If not, it'll be Opacic again. No issues there. And Sam Luckley is back from his suspension. So good news 
for KR and good news yeah. for and some you know, important influential players coming back for both teams. One's on the crest of a wave. And again, in the same spirit as Huddersfield, they will not want to lose momentum. They will want to go and lay a marker down against Catalan. Of course they will. Uh, they'll want to keep momentum going into the semi against against Wigan. Um, as for Catalan, uh, to quote Steve McNamara, it was an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment. He was embarrassed by the performance against Huddersfield. He gave Huddersfield all the credit, but he said it was simply not good enough. He had a lot of questions to ask of his team. So there's no doubt uh, there's been some choice words in <clears throat> opinion this week and they will be coming out absolutely firing there's no doubt about it this is an intriguing game it's one not to be missed on saturday night you know prime time entertainment rugby league style oh yes go on greg over to you sir i think you're right i think matt namara will have fired them up um and, and no disrespect to our huddersfield friends i don't think many people saw no. them turning catalans over and a great performance and <laughs> and and not just not just beating them, but yeah, embarrassing them. Yeah. Uh, and and he's right. And I and I think that uh, Catalan will be eager to bounce back. But I'm going to upset my whole KR friends. Um, I'm going to say they're going to win nine to seventeen. That is, and when and when you sent me your predictions, I looked at that. I thought, wow, that's a big in that. That's a that's a proper shout from the next one. Because I think that, that Catalan will try too hard. And when Catalan try too hard, it falls apart. Well, well, it's a big shout. And KR fans will be delighted. Don Kirkby will be overjoyed. Or Don't maybe, well. or Don't maybe not. Well. But no, do you know what? It could, mate, I think for me at the moment... Just, if, uh, I, I, no... I, said, I said that Warrington will beat Saints. Yeah. And I just get that that gut feeling that KR will beat Catalan. I think Maybe. Catalan are stinging. And, and as, as Freddie says, as um, Freddie says that Huddersfield have got a great record in, in, in Catalan, in Pepignon. Um, I think KR, they're, 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 they're a, they were good last season. And I think the disappointment of the Challenge Cup final last season has given them a bit of steel. Mm. And mm. I, I think that I think, yeah, I just get that feeling. You know when you get a feeling? I know when you get a feeling. It doesn't happen that often now, I'm 46. But yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Uh, but yeah, Black absolutely. You know what the Black Eyed Peas says? i got a feeling. Yeah, tonight's going to be a great night. It's been a fantastic night. Again, it's rugby league chat on a Tuesday. You just can't beat a bit weekly, can you? This has been great. It's wonderful stuff. Uh, Greg, brilliant, mate. 9-17. And do you know what, mate? Absolutely, the way KR are playing. I mean, yeah. they are playing some. I mean, Tangy Noah. And they've got oh. the six. They've got the six senior brothers in the back line for them. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, you know what, mate? Yeah, absolutely. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I think KR. I mean, I, remember, I had them seventh. I, I didn't even have them in the top six. Yeah. I'm, you know, I think it's going to be a right contest for those places, and I think it'll go down to the, the absolute wire this season. I do, I do in terms of who's going to be in the playoffs. But I have to say, since the switch, I was I was I was pretty happy. Uh, not happy for KR to be losing. I'm not saying that, but my prediction of seven was looking pretty good when Iku was at fullback. But since they've changed it, I mean, it's a different side. And Tangi Noah's returned. Telepi Tangi Noah, what a signing! And Whitbread, just two brilliant, brilliant signings. Um, Gary Schofield's gone Catalan nine to seventeen. Um, Steph, we're coming to you in a minute. Joel, nine to seventeen, Catalan. The fans' form have gone one to eight, KR. So the fans' form have gone KR as well. I'm going Catalan nine to seventeen. I think they'll fire back. I think they need to fire back. Quite frankly, uh, you see there, TGN, our onion wearing friend. He's saying it's a big call, Reggie. He's saying it's a big call. Um, but it's, it's Pete Mason saying Catalan Dragons all okay, KR too close to call. Do you know yeah. what? Spot <laughs> And I know the forum will find this difficult to believe, but have been wrong in the past. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Have we all? As, as we have all. <laughs> Some more than others, sir. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, so, Steph, over to good evening. Steph, it, it, still, it, it still hurts that you've not won a prediction league yet after four, is it three, three seasons? Come on, mate. You've got to. Got people, to... I, I let people have a chance to win. You do. You do. You're, like, you're a sporting man. You're a sporting I'm not about the glory. I'm just about the table. You're not, mate. You lose with grace. You do. Uh, right, go on, Steph. Uh, like I say, too close to call. Brilliant looking game. Can't wait for this. I'll be watching on Saturday night. I know you will be. Go on. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm absolutely. This is the game of the round. I, I can't wait for it. I think it's going to be an absolute belter. 
Um, I think the, the difference is going to be the, the, the seven they're bringing in instead of Albu, uh, Abdul, they're bringing in uh, just nick it. They're going to just nick it. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's, you know what I mean? Come on. No. It's, it's getting shocked. You've got to carry on. Yes. No. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no I think the. They, they, they're going to be stinging from the Huddersfield result, aren't they? And I, I, we, we've all been, you know, all, all been saying how good Catalan have been this year. I think that was the the blip on the copy book this year um, with last week's results. So um, I, I've got it, Catalan 9-17, especially if McLaurin comes back. I yeah. think that'll, that'll be the difference for them. Rugby <laughs> League, I think, will be the ultimate winner. It's an- I, I can see McLaurin getting a red. Well, yeah, maybe, but I think I think what we've seen this year in every round, in every round, gents, there's been a game where we've come on the final whistle on a Sunday, and we've just been like, "What a game! What a game!" Every round's had one, and I think this could be that game uh, that we're you know on the final whistle podcast on Sunday. We're saying, "Yeah, this was a hell of a game." It's got everything going for it. Uh, just hope that KR travel well and make it a really good spectacle. Outstanding stuff. Super League Raw Weekly. It's been a great chat. It's fantastic to have had your company. Great chat as always, guys. Right, look, I keep saying this every single week. We're giving loads of prizes away. The quiz was brilliant last night. The next one's coming over in May, May 13th. You know, there'll be a new prize on the line. You know, guys, £2.99 a month. £2.99, that's all it is. If, if you just want to be, a, a, a you know, an 18th man member, that's fine. For less than a latte a month, you get all this entertainment produced for you. And you get the chance of winning tickets to finals, season tickets. You get the chance of, you know, a... Rugby balls, Cadbury cream eggs, you name it. You know, we're such a giving community here. And if you're not even into it for the prizes, come and join the community. The WhatsApp group's fantastic. You know, we've got people meeting for drinks before games. Alex Sharp and Greg are going to be meeting at Edinley before the game this week. Steph's coming down to Warrington this week uh, to watch the, the Leopards with me and Reggie. You know, we've got Joel going. He's hosting Steph. You know, it's a community. You know, we've got, we have yeah. Don Kirkby who won the quiz last night. He's already told us when KR, she's coming to Warrington. We're going to have a we're going to have a drink with Dawn and, you know, before the game. It's a community. That's what makes Rugby League great. Become a part of that community. Get closer to Super League Raw. Become a part of the community for less than two, you know, for, two, for less than a latte a month. All this entertainment. Oh, well, Neil Reddix is giving you pelts and stuff. Who is? Neil Reddix. Why is he, why is he giving me? Why was no, he giving, yeah, he's he's giving me? He's giving me grief for my, uh, my jokes. Oh, is that what he's doing? Right, okay, fair enough. Fair he's enough. Yes, yeah, 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 Neil, yeah. Tumbleweeds and yeah, absolutely. So that there, there's the pitch. Please do go over to Patreon. You know, please become a team talk member so you can come on the podcast. It'd be great to have you on the podcast with the guys and, and get your comments, become a star of your own show. Yeah, so, join us on a Sunday night. It's great, it's it's, it's good chat, really isn't it? fun, and it's yeah. a real good chat. It is, please do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come and join us. And, you know, like I say, we love doing it for you. It's been fantastic. It's growing all the time, every single week. Can't thank Greg, Steph and Joel enough for supporting me with it. Absolutely fantastic to have you come here. Quiz, uh, we will probably be releasing tickets for the quiz next week. So you've got a good month to get yourself in for that one. Uh, it is limited to 95 places. Do become a part of that. It was great. Great fun, as I say, last night. But, yeah, that is Super League Raw Weekly for another week. Brilliant week of conversation. Don't forget, Final Whistle Podcast is going to be uploaded on Monday. All the fallout from round number eight. We'll be discussing that on Sunday night. Make sure you download the Final Whistle Podcast. And don't go anywhere, because after we've reminded ourselves who the top performers are in Super League, as we always do, there's a little bit of an announcement. There's a little bit of an announcement coming, and that announcement is who the next In Conversation guest is going to be. So you want to see who that one's going to be. That's going to be a really, really interesting chat. So, ladies and gentlemen, until next week, 8 p.m., Steph, say it, you can't beat. A bit of weekly. And Greg, as always, sir, it's an absolute pleasure to have your company, my friend. Oh, they loved it, even though I was trapped in a vortex for the first 15 minutes. <laughs> right, it. here come the top performers, and like I say, don't go anywhere. Because there is an announcement coming as to who the next in conversation is going to be. See you next week, guys. Enjoy your rugby league this weekend. Get to the match. Here are your top performers after seven rounds in the Betfred Super League. We have a brand new top try scorer. It's Adam Swift of Huddersfield Giants. We've eight, five games in a row. He's crossed the line. The top try sisters, they used to be teammates. Now they're tied with nine apiece. It's Brody Croft and Mark Steed. The most beaten in Super League remains Matt Duffy, 1,231. But breaking the thousand this week was Essen Masters and Ryan Hall. 
the top tackle buster is still Matt Duffy with 59, but Tim Lafay is in hopper shoot with 56. The top clean breakers each with nine is Matt Duffy of the Warrington Wolves and in his senior of the Castleford Tigers. The most offloads have come from Liggy Sauer with 15, he just needs to stay on the field. The most hard meters you're going to be a prop forward, second roll loose forward in this one, and he might not have played this week, but he's still there. It's Paul Vaughan of the Warrington Wolves with 37, Alex Wormsley just 37 behind now on 800. The most tackles in Super League, it's still Jordan Lane, 284 for the black and white. And the top goal kicker remains Mark Sneed with 29 for the Salford Red Devils. Those are your top performers after seven rounds of the Betfred Super League.